Hello, 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 and welcome to Sports Buzz, the fanatical view. I am your host, Scott D. Lewis, here live in studio on this very nice, nice. actually. Oh, it's beautiful. Early, it's a uh, spring weather, uh, February day, February 23rd. We are here in Danbury, Connecticut, of course, Comcast Cable Channel 23, here to 630. Fastest 30 minutes in all of TV talk sports. So uh, if you want to make a phone what's, call, uh, get what's, in. What's the new phone You number? can do that. I am being told we have a new phone number, which I have not been we're, informed we're, we're of We're waiting yet. for a phone number. <laughs> so I this can't is another. tell you what it is. Maybe they'll put it up on the screen <laughs> as the show goes on, and we will can, all find out together. Can you guys put it up on the screen so what we that know what the new, new phone number is? is? <laughs> Anyways, Big Bob Broad Jr., yes. you can probably hear him over there behind yes. the camera talking it up. How you doing there, Bob? I'm doing great, Scott, and yourself? I'm doing pretty good. Thank you very much. How's and uh, I hear you saying the Whalers maintaining their pace from They're, a week ago. Yes, yes, they are. They're still in third place. Still in third place. Still holding on to that uh, playoff position. Yes. And uh, the playoff date has been set. Yes, it's the 10th of March. 10th of March. It's a All Friday. Right. So that's coming quick, right before St. Patrick's Day. Maybe it'll be a nice St. Patrick's Day weekend. Oh, well, it could Pat be. You could go right you know, to St. Patty's Day. It'd be great. Those green Whalers jerseys fit right in with the green St. Patrick's Day regalia down there in the Danbury Arena. Yep, we got a home game this uh, coming Friday night against Aquasani. And then we have uh, the 29th uh, against Brooklyn. Uh, Saturday the, the 3rd is against uh, the Federals, which is the Mill Plain Firehouse night, uh -huh. and Sunday, which is the last game of the season, against the Danville Dashers on the 4th. All right, so they're really coming down the stretch, and yes. they're playing well. They survived all those suspensions. Yes. Uh, Got all the players back, and they also... Uh, most of the players should be back this week. Uh, there's still a few that might be landing that's going to go right till the end of the, the season, so... All right. And how did the uh, chilly winter warm-up... It went beautiful. I hear rumors of 1,500 to 2,000 2, people. people. Yes, it was well-packed. It was well-attended. The chili was good, and everything came out really well. Very nice, very nice. And how did our boy Dave King do with the he music? Did one, he did great. As a matter of fact, that uh, it's going to be on next Tuesday night at 6 o'clock. It's on an hour special. Oh, the uh, whole... Winter. Yes, on my show, Spotlight On. Spotlight On. <laughs> a little plug for Spotlight On on Tuesday next yes. week. Yeah, at uh, 6, so you won't see my regular show at 9, So, but I will be back the following week. <laughs> and uh, in the studio, speaking of shows on the air here, we got uh, Mr. Mike Tui has recovered from his illness. Yes, he's he back. He is back, and of course he has his Expose Cinema show on uh, Friday nights. And uh, when's the re-air on that? Uh, what, what, Mike, what's your show re-air on? Wednesdays. Wednesday afternoon and uh, Danbury Live, Live right? Saturday nights. Uh, Saturday nights goes uh, seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Mr. John Tuesday. Newmiler is in there again helping Tuesday us out. Tuesday mornings at eleven a.m. And I will give a little uh, self promotion plug. Okay. Breaking news here. Uh, yes, uh, our boy Mr. Kevin Gallagher with his show Time Out with Kevin Gallagher. Do you want to give him a plug? <laughs> He is not with us lately, helping out with the show. That's a whole nother story. The evil story. director has been... Mr. Been, evil director has been, been MIA. But he has swindled me back into his show. And tomorrow night, you can see at 8.30, the Oscar preview show, our third annual. I will be uh, on the can, show. Can you give us a little preview? Just a small preview. Well, not since much, I haven't just... done any of the prep work, and I won't be doing that until tomorrow afternoon, I oh. really can't give you much. Oh, but, <laughs> the so, artist will win. The Best artist? picture. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think the artist will definitely win Best Picture, um, and I think Woody Allen is going to win Best uh, Writer. Uh, I think his film will yes. get a, yeah, I think Mr. Woody Allen is going to get an Oscar this year. Those are my two big predictions. I will have the rest. You'll have to tune in tomorrow night at 8.30, and then you can watch his show re-airs Monday morning, I think at 11, and you can see if we got it all right, all right. after uh, the Oscars are over on Sunday night. So that is what's going on there. Another little plug as you hear the nice soothing sounds of Fatty Roots in the background. Once the show is over tonight, I'm going to be heading straight up to Ridgefield to Trey. Nice little restaurant in Ridgefield to see uh, the acoustic trio, Mana, which features lead singer from Fatty Roots, Mr. Mikey Dredd. So if you're in the Ridgefield area tonight and you want to check out a little uh, acoustic reggae, go on over to the nice uh, Trey restaurant over there in Ridgefield. So uh, another week, another Sports Illustrated. Yes, it's a beautiful well, Sports Illustrated. I saw that well, on the last Letterman week, show. Uh, last week, the cover of Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition yes, I saw was her very nice. She is very... But there was another cover, and again this week, gracing the cover. 
Mr. Jeremy Lin. Yes. Two weeks in a row, Bob. Tell, uh, factor this, the, the insanity has gotten to be so much that Jeremy Lin has become the first New York-based athlete ever to grace the cover of Sports Illustrated two straight weeks. weeks in a row, yes. Only 12 athletes all time have ever done that. Have ever done that. And Mr. Jeremy Lin goes from nowhere to, to everywhere. Yeah. All over the place, Jeremy Lin is. So Lin Sation, Lin Sanity continues. Of course, Mr. Carmelo Man uh, Anthony returned, and the Knicks were not feeling too mellow no. on the Lin Sanity upon his return sure, when the yes, New Jersey Nets <laughs> beat them down the oh, other night. That was there, a terrible, terrible game. Carmelo tried to pick this soft landing, Bob. He avoided that Dallas Mavericks game Sunday. He said, "I'll come back for the Nets. Yeah, that, you know, that's, a, that's ease a my way game. back in. You know. you know, no big deal. Yeah, we get a little like easy soft landing." They look like they're play they look like the fakers out there. Didn't work out so well. <laughs> as we see D. Will right there rejecting Lynn. Darren Williams had a monster game. Uh, he was a little fed up with all the Lynn sanity. As I think everybody's starting to get a little fed up yeah, with all I the Lynn so sanity. Too. Also factor this, Bob. Tebow Mania yes. obviously was berserk, right? right? Totally <laughs> off the chain with the coverage. Right. Lynn sanity has completely eclipsed. Tebow mania already within oh, yes. three weeks. Yeah. Uh, they did a study at the height of the Tebow mania during the course of a week. Sports Center mentioned Tebow's name 150 something times. Right. They, in the last last week, Sports Center mentioned Lynn's name over 300 times. They already doubled it. Yes. Tebow mania. Tebow, what is Tebow mania? Tebow mania is nothing now. What's well, this football's gone? We were we're the out of the insanity. <laughs> this insatiable need for the media to have this mega story, this yeah. big huge story. Every day it's like, where's Jeremy Lin gonna live? He's got a uh, nice little hotel yeah. at the W in New York City. Now he's got his condo all lined up yeah. in downtown Manhattan. So Jeremy Lin has a place to live. He's not staying on his teammates' couch anymore. Yeah. Everybody he's sleeping out in the. Uh, about that. <laughs> He's sleeping at the wall. I cannot believe <laughs> that uh, the NBA did not get him into the All Star game this weekend. I'm surprised okay. he wasn't. I mean, they had the perfect opportunity. Joe Johnson, who did not play for the Atlanta Hawks last night, no way they were going to win that game as right. the Knicks crushed them. The Hawks losers of eight of the last 11, and then they lose their uh, top player. Right. So, no way they were coming into the garden last night and winning. So, they get beat down. The Knicks, of course, Brick City. Finally going on the road. They've been playing right. an awful lot of home games to get this Lin Sanity thing going. Uh, they go down to Miami tonight for the marquee matchup, 7 o'clock. Big game down there. But I can't believe, I mean, they did get him in the Shooting Stars competition as a second-year player, sophomore team. But with Joe Johnson out with injury, not going to be on the All-Star team, uh, you know, I thought maybe they would slide Lynn in. Instead, they slide Rajon Rondo from yes. the Celtics in. And Rondo apparently was upset by being snubbed oh. to begin with. Spare me, Rajon Rondo. As you know, <laughs> I am a, a Celtics fan. Yes, I know. You are a diehard. Well, <laughs> please. I mean, he missed how many games this year with injury? Right. Then he missed the last two games when they are playing Oklahoma City and Dallas and getting embarrassed as this... Boston Jokers national TV comedy tour has continued this last week. Embarrassed on national television against the Mavericks, against the Bulls, against the Oklahoma City Thunder last night. And he's suspended for two games for uh, disputing a call the other day. And he's upset he's not on the All-Star team. Come on, he did, I mean, right. you know, fine. In a typical year, yeah, he's all-star caliber. He's a guy that should be on the all-star team, but this is not a typical year. It's a shortened season. He hasn't played. When he's in the lineup, they're under 500. When he was out of the lineup, they were 9-1. and one. Since then, they lost five in a row. Lost, I don't even know how many, seven out of eight at this point. You know, undid that whole nice run they had. So the Celtics are looking horrible. And the Knicks obviously have done their job going from 8-15 and 15 to now, what, 17-17. And uh, so they are hoping, ball. We're doing, we're doing great. You know, maybe if they come out with a win against Miami tonight. Miami, meanwhile, 
the Heat, you gotta give it to them. They are red hot. Yeah. Winners of seven straight, uh, tied for the best record in the league. And I think all seven of those wins have come by double digit amount. You know, more than uh, 10 points, victories and all those wins. And they're chomping at the bit to get their uh, little hands on Mr. Jeremy Lin and uh, see what they can do with him and Melo and J.R. Smith. And, you know, everybody's talking about insanity. How about no vanity? Yeah. Novak. Yes. This guy Novak. Come out of nowhere. <laughs> shooting the three ball. You know, I could have done, you know, that win against the Mavericks the other day was pretty good. Oh, yeah. I don't give him that much. You know, they came out hot first half. And then, uh, you know, the Mavericks got the game under control. They went up by 10, 11 points, I think right. they had it in the third quarter. It looked like they were going to pull away. And then no vanity right. comes in off the bench, hits a bunch of threes, turns the game right around. They, they get a 20-point swing. Mavericks came back, had a shot to win it late. Uh, they missed a Jason and Terry three-pointer that could have won that game. But uh, that was an impressive win before they let down against the Nets the following day. But I got to say, I could do without the little uh, no vanity discount double check. Yeah. Did you see that little? Uh, yeah. The little, yeah. I uh, got the uh, belt. He, he, he wanted to get the uh, Aaron Rodgers. Uh... The Aaron Rodgers discount <laughs> double check after one of his threes there. I could also do without the little tongue wag from Mr. Jeremy Lin <laughs> and the uh, shirt popping uh, by Jeremy Lin and of course J.R. Smith. Fresh off the boat from uh, China, where right. he was playing over there, joins forces with the Knicks, and he had a few shots uh, in that game. He, of course, was no stranger to popping his jersey, and uh, we'll see more of that. And then Baron Davis gets involved in the act last night against the Hawks. So the Knicks got things going on. I personally think win or lose against Miami tonight it doesn't really matter. Right. Uh, just give him the trophy right yeah. now. Let's get the bust. Yeah. Let's get Jeremy Lin in the Hall of Fame. Right. We go. We'll have another hall. We'll have another parade down. Uh, I think the, the uh, Canyon the Heroes and. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the Knicks win the championship. Right. Going away, no yeah. problem. Jeremy Lin goes to the Hall of Fame. I think also the emblem on the NBA emblem. You yeah. know, everybody thinks that's Jerry West. Maybe we'll just turn it into Jerry Jeremy Lin. Yeah. Why not? And just go crazy with yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. It'd be nuts. <laughs> We'll have his own rock video next. <laughs> All right, so we are almost ready for the All-Star break. The Sixers are struggling now, losers of five straight. Good job, however, by the Pacers, yeah. one of the early season surprises. After they lost five straight, they have now rebounded, winning four straight. So good job by them. The Bulls, 27-8. and eight, Miami, 26-7. and seven. Orlando, they're a little heckle and jive, 22-12. and 12. Uh, They had a big letdown against Miami the other night. Knicks, Boston, 17-17, 15-17, horrible by the Celtics. Just really pathetic. Uh, but Cleveland and Milwaukee are falling by the wayside. So it's going to be an eight-team race in the East, and it's just going to be about positioning and what seed you get. Yeah, what's out in the West? Out West, San Antonio, uh, you know, their nice win streak finally comes to an end. Why? Because in this shortened, crazy, crazy compressed yeah. season, yes. they decided to rest all their stars and sit Tim Duncan and Tony Parker on the bench, and they get blown out uh, by Portland, who needed a win because they were struggling as, as well. But uh, San Antonio still 23-10. and 10. Dallas, you know, they lost to the Fakers last night. I didn't like that loss no, at that all. Was, that was terrible. Yeah, that was not good at all by them. 22 and tw or 21 and 12. Houston again, Bob. 20 and 14. They're, they've been, they've been three straight. They've, they've been won seven pace, and three you know? in the last ten. Memphis. There's going to be five teams coming out of the Southwest, basically, because yeah. Memphis is a force to be reckoned with. I'm telling you right now, I like Memphis. They had a slow start. The record 19 and 15 doesn't prove them yet to be among the top in the West, but I like Memphis a lot with what they're doing. OK City, 26 and 7. They got a big game tonight against the Fakers as well. Hopefully they can beat the Fakers. <laughs> Denver is now struggling, 18 and 15. Portland struggling, 18 and 16. Minnesota, watch them. They are coming yeah. on, 17 and 17. Clip joint, 19 and 11. Lakers, 19 and 13. That's the story out west. That's the NBA so story. So what are we going to next? Go to hockey? We can go to hockey. We got about 15 minutes. Let's mention the Detroit Red Wings, perhaps. Why, why, do, we, want to do, why do we want to mention them? 
You know, we've been overlooking this story a little bit, but when you break a record that stood for eight decades, Bob. Yeah, I guess you could mention it. I mean, you gotta mention, 23 game home winning streak over the course of two seasons, which was a record held by the Boston Bruins, as a matter of fact. Who's the Boston Bruins? They got a nice <laughs> win in St. Louis last night, Bob. They needed it bad because they, like your Rangers, Rangers who are in the struggling lead. a little bit, <laughs> though. However, I told you the Blackhawks were gunning for you last yeah. week. They yeah. got you. They got you. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and I, we also got bitten by the, by the Penguins, too. Penguins got you again. Uh, the Bruins right there had a tough game against Minnesota. What's with the Bruins? Every time they play somebody, the goalie stands on their head these days. Yeah, we just... 40-something saves out of Minnesota's goaltender. We obviously saw what the Rangers did last week. 40-something right. saves. Lunk was standing on his head. But the Ra the Rangers, you think they're going to pull a trade? Are they going to go get that kid? Nice it's, from, uh, it's, it's possible. You know, from uh, Columbus. He's sitting out there. But the standings, all right, the Red Wings, first of all, they set the regular, over the course of one season, 21 straight wins. Yeah. And then uh, they went on and continued that to 23 and counting, as a matter of fact. They are continuing that. The uh, Bruins end up going to St. Louis last night and getting a much needed win. St. Louis hadn't lost a regular regulation game uh, since December. So that was a nice win in St. Louis. All right, but we have been talking for the last two years about how w out west in the yes. NHL, the standings are all jumped together big time, and they still are. But only two teams out west are not really in the race right, right now. Six points separates the final five teams from the eighth spot, basically. Now, however, in the Eastern Conference, yes. every single team is in the mix. Yeah, I know. You know, there's eight points separate the bottom from the eighth seed. Carolina, you know, wasn't playing well, but they're at 57. Montreal, 58. The Islanders, seven points out at 58. Uh, you've got Montreal and uh, Buffalo at 59 there. And Buffalo had a nice win. That was a tough loss for the Islanders because they've been coming on and they needed that win. They lost to Buffalo. Buffalo moves a point ahead of them, inching closer to Toronto, I believe it is, at 65. And Washington, who's still struggling, but they're only two points behind uh, uh, Florida there. Yeah. So, you know, it's all jumped up in the Eastern Conference, and that is affecting the trade deadline, which is Monday, because now nobody wants to be a seller. You know, nobody's going to sell one of their teams off because, you know, right. it, you know, they're all within striking distance. Also, now your Rangers, who are still comfortable, 81 points, they lead overall the Bruins sitting at second at 74 but the New Jersey Devils have moved ahead of Philly and Pittsburgh yes, at 74 they, points. They've have, they have been doing some catch-up. They have and uh, Pittsburgh and Philly right behind them at 73. I mentioned Toronto at 65. Winnipeg Jets, yes. formerly the Atlanta Thrashers. First year back in Winnipeg, uh, they have all of a sudden moved into a tie for the eighth spot yeah. with Toronto. So that is a nice story for Winnipeg. And tomorrow night, the, the, the Rangers play the Islanders, so we'll see how. Big uh, game for those I Icelanders. Be, I, be, I won't see that because I'll be at the, the Whaler game. <laughs> well, you know, maybe I'll have to send you some text messages during the game. game. Oh, that, how those that, I appreciate Icelanders that. are tormenting your Rangers, yeah. perhaps. Yeah. We shall see. How about uh, a little uh, college basketball? Sure. Lady Huskies? Yes. Speaking of winning streaks? They, they're, they're, they came to an end. Home streak going for win number 100. And it went bye-bye. The St. John's Red Storm, Lady Storm. Oh, boy. They shot them down. Shot them down. Tough loss for UConn. They didn't play a great game. St. John's give them credit. They hit the shot in the final seconds to win it. Big win for them as they were, as we can see there, jubilant with their success in uh, taking down the Lady Huskies. But the Lady Huskies are still gonna be fine. They came back and just throttled Pitt yeah. after that loss. But a uh, great run, obviously, to win 99 straight home games. Unbelievable run for the Lady Huskies. UConn men, however, they really needed a big win, and they uh, somehow, some way, came up with an overtime win. It was a shaboom yeah. from Shabazz, yeah. from deep. 
Shabizi for threesies. He went a couple. He went deep threesies. <laughs> Way beyond the NBA line. Yeah. Shabizi for threesy knocked it down as Villanova, who has been horrible, suffering through their worst season in recent memory. Right. Uh, they looked like a supernova team against UConn. Unbelievable. The Huskies actually. Good job by them because they could have quit in this game, really. It looked like they had. They were down 18 points in the first half. They actually yep. tied the game before the half was over. Went into the locker room, tied. Then it was nip and tuck, up four to six points, mostly throughout the second half. But they could not shake Villanova. And Villanova then, in the final seconds of regulation, forces overtime. And then, you know, missed free throws. Hurt UConn in that aspect. And then with five seconds left, here it is. Villanova ties it. UConn does not call timeout. Inbounds to uh, Shabazz Napier. He dribbles it up court and bang from 30 feet, Bob. Nothing yeah. but nylon. NBN. Nothing but nylon. He's a PTP -er, yeah. as uh, Dickie V might say. Prime time player. Yes, I think he's right. He's super that. soft, super <laughs> scintillating and sensational he was <laughs> in that situation right there. <laughs> Yes, he was, Rob. <laughs> and as uh, Bill Rafferty might just might have said, he displayed some onions on that shot. Pull up for three, 30 feet, bang! <laughs> bang. <laughs> and how about my Colorado State Rams? Who are they? <laughs> CSU officially was listed as a bubble team this week. Yeah. And then they go ahead and knock off New Mexico, who had beaten San Diego State and beaten UNLV. New Mexico, it took them you know, they were 22 and four, Bob, and they weren't even in the uh, top 25 until this week. They finally cracked, to cracked to top 25. They moved to 19. They go to the Moby Arena and the Moby Maniacs. I have been there and enjoyed those Moby Maniacs, and they enjoyed quite the show as the CSU Rams came up big at home. I told you they can't play on the road, but they can play at home. They've been playing well at home. And they are now listed as the last four into the tournament. So maybe already they've done enough. I say they got to do more uh, as they finish up the season. I think they're going to have to do some damage in their conference tournament. So that was a big story. My guys in the studio room are denying me the imagery of CSU, yeah. not giving me my photos <laughs> of the CSU Rams. Perhaps they can find it for me. But otherwise, hey, can you find us a Ram it. photo out there? <laughs> believe it, because they were there. They won that game. They beat New Mexico in thrilling fashion. It was a tight game. They got a big dunk late in that game to seal it, and they came away with the W. CSU could be dancing into the uh, March Madness. So that is a little college basketball. Do we want to talk about uh, the Daytona 500? Yes, it's weird. This weekend is the... Uh, Carl yeah. Edwards. Carl Edwards. On the pole position. Yes, he is. Danica Patrick her. making her first ever start. Yes, she is. She joins forces with one Tony Stewart. Yes, which should be a great, great, uh, interesting... Should be. I mean, Tony coming off the championship. Yeah. So he's back on top of the NASCAR world after being down a little bit. Jimmy Johnson, the ruler of the land. Has not been. That did not get his. He was denied. He has denied as his Tony Stewart six, reclaimed his proper spot among the smoke top. Did, smoke, smoke came back and uh, did the jab. Yeah, Tony the Tiger. Now he's got a hot tiger riding yeah. alongside him. Yeah. Uh, Miss Danica Patrick. Uh, speaking of uh, swimsuit edition, maybe we'll get to uh, be able to see some of those photos. I'm starting to think maybe there's got, an issue. We got, oh. any, we got anything to talk oh, about? Oh, well, there's the swimsuit cover, one yes. Kate Upton. Yes. Which they say, you know, by the way, that that cover was uh, airbrushed. Oh, yeah? And there is Dana Kirkpatrick looking very good uh, when she graced the swimsuit issue. I think that was last year. She was not in it this year. But uh, Ryan, looking very nice on a very hot, I'm not sure what kind of car that, that is. That 50 foot uh, uh, swimsuit issue in, down in uh, New York. Yeah? Yeah. They uh, got the big billboard up? Yes. Yes, actually I did see that when they revealed the cover and it was one Miss Kate Upton gracing that cover as it were. All right, what else we got, Bob? Well, we got baseball going on. Uh, the yeah. Roundup. Yes, the, the West. How does one get their hands on this? Yeah, uh, you can come to the uh, Danbury Westerners booth this weekend at the uh, at the mall. Uh -huh. Saturday and Sunday, we're going to be. Uh, oh, they're doing their big mall thing. Yes, we're going to be at the uh, the home show. So come on over, 
you know, you can pick up you know, that that news that flyer and uh, which has all our updated information. Uh, it has uh, our uh, team that's going to be playing with us this year. They got the roster already. The rosters set? inside. No kidding. Yep. Uh, we also Anybody from UConn. A quick little look through. Yeah. We got a couple of kids from Marist College. We have. Uh, very nice. Uh, we also have... Um, and the coaches are back, which is nice. Yep. Uh, we also have, uh, on the back is our... Victor um, Diaz. Our, uh, will be our, is the full um, listing for the all the games, and there's a lot more in there. A couple guys Two returning. Minutes. Maybe a couple yes. guys... Yeah, we have three, like... three players returning. That's good. So come on down to the... Is that all weekend at this the This will be all weekend. And uh, very nice. So uh, you can see what's going on with the Westerners as they get themselves ready. For their season, which will in our uh, the 8th of uh, May, uh, June is our uh, it was the breakfast when we're still under secrets, uh, secretive. Uh, who's going to be our... Bobby Valentine? No, not be Bobby Valentine. Pitchers and catchers have reported, speaking yes. of uh, bikinis and nice weather. Yes. Oh, and a new look and, Red Sox, Mr. Bobby Valentine leading up the crew down there. And I would like to mention uh, the passing of our of, uh, one Mr. Gary Carter, That's the true. kid. We uh, were signing off last week when those that news came in. Gary Carter, one of the all-time greats, and I say as a Red Sox fan, not a bad word could be said about the kid, even though he was a big part in extending the curse at the time when the Mets beat those uh, Red Sox. But Gary Carter, one of the all-time greats, and that was just... Terribly sad news to hear about the passing of such a great guy. Ironic in the fact that the hard partying Mets. Yes. Uh, and Gary was the clean living one. Yeah. And he succumbed to the illness. And uh, he was not able to stay here with us any longer. But he lived a full life. And uh, one of his parting words was that he was ready for God's plan for him. And uh, I'm sure he's not in any pain anymore, which, which is a blessing for him but pitchers and catchers have reported and we'll get more into that and all that good stuff, stuff next week next week and we will see if jeremy lynn is on the cover for a third straight time maybe he, he can be. tie the record held by michael jordan in, in yesterday's post or no not post daily news they had a full-size cover po uh <laughs> lynn uh it's all lynn all the time all right, we will see you next week. We will be live again. Tune in again tomorrow night for the Oscar preview show on Time Out with Kevin Gallagher. And uh, check out all the other shows right here on Comcast Cable Channel 23.